folks welcome to tank tuesday if you're new to this channel or if you've missed some of our previous tank tuesday videos don't worry we're going to go over all the pets we have in both this 300 gallon aquarium and our 55 gallon aquarium we got two pet bass bonnie and clyde bonnie's hiding out in the back there's clyde hanging out over there and then we also have a big bluegill named sheriff but if any of you watched our most recent Tank Tuesdays video, I'm sure you're probably most interested in what's in our 55 gallon tank. All right, so there's our new pet bass. We've given them a couple days to kind of relax in here. We hadn't fed him anything yet, but it's about to be time to feed him. He seems to be doing all right. He's got one little white spot on his back there. We're not quite sure what that is. I don't know if that's a part of his fin there or what, but seems a little interesting, but he looks a little slender, so it's time to feed him some worms and crickets. We also have the Pleco down there hanging out. Hadn't seen him in a few videos. So I think we're going to start off with a solo cricket. and see if he shows any interest in that. Oh yes, definite interest. Yep. He's trying. It may be a little too big for him. Man, he is aggressive. Wow, look at that. Cricket may be a little big, but he is definitely eating him. You can tell by the size of that minnow we caught him on that he is not afraid. Those big old eyes. Wow, that's impressive. This guy has quite an appetite. Ooh, look at that belly. That's all from one cricket right there. And I feel like he's ready for more, too. I think we're going to stop there with feeding tonight i definitely don't want to overfeed him so we'll come back tomorrow and see if he'll eat an earthworm all right we fed him a cricket last night tonight we are going to drop an earthworm in and see if he'll eat a worm oh he got it that was quick all right we're going to drop one more worm in there i have a feeling if he lets one of them go and they get down there with those catfish it's not going to last long Let's try one more worm. Got it. So now I'm going to drop some shrimp pellets in. That's what we typically feed our catfish. And I kind of want to see how the bass and the catfish react. Or if they fight over food or if the bass is interested at all. So we got some pellets going in. He's testing them out. But that shrimp smell will definitely get those catfish out, so. Uh-oh, the bass kind of checking them out. He thinks there's food down there. <laughs> it's the first time I've really seen them interact together at all. I think the new bass is just kind of curious as to what he's doing or what he might be eating. He's definitely following him around like he's got a new buddy. And Casper in the back starting to come out. So now it's time for the Pleco's dinner time. He likes to eat zucchini. It's a strange combination feeding these fish. We got this guy who will eat anything you put in the tank. This one likes vegetables. Catfish like shrimp pellets. Well folks, we have some bad news. This little guy has an anchor worm that's that little white thing poking up right there that's a parasite and i thought that it was originally just a damaged fin because it sits right beside where his fins are so i did a little bit of research on it and found out how to remove it so we're going to remove it and also treat him with a little bit of an ointment and we got the tank water level down while we're doing our water change so we're going to pull him out remove the anchor worm add something to help with an, any sort of infection for the wound and then put him back in here and hopefully everything will be all right. All right, so Liz is going to be our surgeon. We'll fix and see how hard it is to catch this little guy. Liz, you might want to wait on him to get out in the open. And then just swoop him up. All right, so we just captured him in the net. Let's go ahead and bring him out. Got your tweezers here. There's your tweezers. Okay. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Now we're going to quick.
quickly treat him with this ointment. All right, we diluted some of this ointment in with some tank water. We'll rub that on him. There we go. All right, let's drop him back. Hopefully, he'll be a happy little dude now. Sorry, buddy. Had to do a little bit of surgery on you. <laughs> no, I don't want to go. There we go. Looking much better. So guys, that's something new. We never had to do anything like that. Never had any parasites or any issues. But that came from him where he was living. And so hopefully, that'll be the last issue that we have with anchor worms. You learn something new every day with a tank. For those of you who had never seen our crawfish, that's Larry the Lobster. He's our biggest crawfish. He's got the two big pinchers. And he'll sit right up under that little log there and come out whenever we feed him some shrimp pellets. All right, they all just had a good feeding, so I'm going to turn our blowers off, and I should be able to drop some pellets down in here these guys. Let's see if I can get him to come out and eat. All right, I got some right down in front of me, and we'll stand back over here to the side, and he should come out. And there's Larry. Alright, so we finally have a Red Junior spotting down here, just below these cracks. He's hanging out, so I'm going to see if I can do the same thing and drop some food down there for him and see if he'll come out to eat. Well, oh, he's out, but we got the two bass garden. You better eat quick, Red Junior. <laughs> you better grab it and hide. You starting to get some company. Good. I think that was a successful mission there. <laughs> well guys, I got some potentially good news. I'm out here cutting grass. I see this little frog hopping off. And it looks like we could have a little lucky. Where did he go? There he is. Look at him. I'm pretty sure this is a, our old tadpole lucky. And he's off. We're not going to scare you away, buddy. Happy you're still around. He's hanging out over here by our old John boat. There he is. Good little shot of him. I'll we'll go get him a little glass of water. All right, Lucky. I'll leave you a little cup of water out here. I know you're probably hot because I'm burning up. Drink up. You got some growing to do. All right, now on to one of the most important parts. We're going to let Liz and our dog Milo name this new pet bass. Liz, you ready to give it a name? Come back to me in about 30 minutes. I'm going to read through the comments first. Yeah, it may take you a little while. I think there was uh -huh. about 3,000 comments on here, so we'll be back in just a minute to find out our new pet's name. All right, Liz, we're back. What's it going to be? Well, there's quite a few good ones, but I really like Moby. What do you think about that? You like that? Moby? Yeah, yeah, I kind of like that. That kind of goes with his personality because he's such a small <laughs> bass, but he acts like he's a whale. Yeah. Milo, you agree with Moby? Let's go see what Moby thinks. So I picked out a couple of you guys that said Moby in the comment section below. If your name is on the screen, send me a private message, and we'll get you a fishing package sent out. All right, guys, so there you have it. Our new pet bass's name is Moby. So now in this tank, we have Moby, Whiskers, Casper, and a couple others. Wow. That is one vicious little dude. Well, that's one thing I really like about this little guy. I can feed him one cricket, and that's all he can eat for a day. As to where Bonnie and Clyde, it takes a bunch. All right, now we're gonna go over some of the questions from last Tank Tuesday's video while we watch some of the feeding clips from this past week. First question comes from Chandler Chipko. 
Bama Bass, what are the dimensions of your big fish tank? Well, Chandler, we put all of this information in our video descriptions. You can find this as well as all the other stuff that's part of our tank. And our tank is 300 gallons and it's a 96 by 30 by 24. Next question comes from Alex Wathen. Where are the Colombian sharks? Well, we showed that in one of our previous videos. We've actually let a friend put them in his brackish water tanks because they have they require brackish water once they get to a certain age. So we moved them over to his tank. We'll probably do an update on that one day soon. Next question comes from Ching Lee. Laugh out loud, he's going to eat those algae eaters. Ching, you may be right. I haven't seen those algae eaters since we put our small bass in, but sometimes they do go into hiding and it's hard to spot them. All right, next question comes from Mark Lewis. You should make a video on crankbaits featuring how your bass react to a silent crankbait, a rattling crankbait, and a Livingston crankbait with sound technology. That's a good idea, Mark. If you guys want to see that and see if sound technology or rattles make a difference, let me know down below. Next question comes from Jeffrey Giamo. Question, have you ever seen Bonnie or Clyde or Sheriff let one rip? and then swim to the other side. No, Jeffrey, we've never seen one of our fish let one rip, but I thought that was funny, so I put it in here in this video. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up with Jeffrey's comment. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed so you can check in on all of these fish and our pets. We'll also have a pet crappie coming soon. See you all next Tuesday. Children.